Hi, this is Doug Gerard, developer of iAnalyze Racing, and we're going to get started today with running your first session and collecting data for the first time with iAnalyze Racing. Um, in order to do that, of course, you have to have iAnalyze Racing up and running, and I already have done that. Uh, for you, you can go to the Start menu, iAnalyze Racing. Uh, it should be right there uh, in the list. If it's not, you can go to All Programs. There should also be one listed in the uh, All Programs area. To, uh, to get started, it really all, all you really need to do is have iAnalyze Racing up and running uh, and go to uh, iRacing. And once you're logged into iRacing and ready to go, join the session. And when you join the session, it should start up and we'll get going on. Uh, uh, should be able to start using the iAnalyze Racing to record data. takes a little bit for the system to get started. Now what we're going to do here is just basically do a quick run through of some of the features of iAnalyze Racing that uh, you can use uh, in the in, in the race car and in, and in your sessions. And you'll hear a number of beeps. One of the things that we demonstrate of course is the voice commands. Uh, the voice commands are started with the uh, push to talk button that you set as part of the installation if you've gone through the installation already. And you'll be able to hear a, when you press the button, you'll hear a, a high-pitched beep that will tell you that um, it's I analyze racing is looking for a voice command, and you'll say the command. And once you'll either hear, you'll hear either some kind of tone to say it did it, or it'll speak something back to you if you're asking for information, or it will it will do something anyway in order to to let you know that it heard and understood what you did. And you could also uh, turn off or, or have it say, "Whoops, I didn't mean to say that." So for here is turning on the voice command. And here's what happens when you turn it off and not say anything. So if you hear that, that means I'm issuing a voice command. And that means I turned it off. Um, and it's only good for the, for the next command. So you press the button, issue a command, and, and move from there. So now we'll uh, enter it into the uh, iAnalyze Racing session. Or the iRacing session. And we'll get out on track. Five, five, eight. And now that we've completed a lap, we can issue, uh, we can ask questions of the iAnalyze Racing as well as 
get that first lap, it starts keeping track of some statistics, so we could ask, top speed? Top speed is 100.1 miles per hour. Or you could ask, fuel usage? Averaging 0 0.10 gallons per lap. Fifty one point two laps of fuel left. Just kind of a neat thing. Now, one of the most important features, and I think is probably the one that's worse the most, especially if you're running in races that require pit stops, is the ability to, to set up a pit stop. Now, one of the most basic commands that I like is pit stop, no service. Ten four pit stop, no service. One. Minute 10.628. And that sets up your system so that, or your pits at your next stop, that there won't be any service. And that's great, especially in races uh, where you have a reset and you're getting towed back to the pits because you had a really big off. And that way you'll get to the pits, you'll, you'll get your reset, and you'll be able to go right back out and not have to wait for a pit stop. Of course, you can also say things like pit stop, add five gallons, change right side only. 10-4, adding 5 gallons, changing right side tires, removing tear off. And you notice that she reads back exactly what's going to happen. And we're going to actually stop now in the pits. And when we get to the pits, what we're going to see is... Uh, we're going to start listening for the pit countdown timer to tell us when and where uh, our pit stall is. This is really good, especially on crowded racetracks and, and ovals, this is really helpful. Here we are, pulling into the pits. Pit box in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bingo. So now we'll get our pit service and we'll notice we'll get the fuel. Oh, the right side of the car goes up. Changing the right side tires. And we're done. Probably takes a little bit to finish off the fuel here. And as soon as that's complete, we'll be able to take off and do our next lap. And that's our first session. Now when you're in the pits, um, one of the nice things you can do with iAnalyze Racing is you can actually leave iRacing up and running. And you can switch to iAnalyze Racing to take a look at your data. We'll do that. And here we are, and we've got our data. You can actually go right in here and start looking at different laps, the different drivers, and, set. and it's, it'll still update. That was an update there. Uh, while you're here, notice all the, all the sessions are filled in with telemetry markers. Uh, you'll notice you can go to the lap report. You can take a look at what your lap report is. Uh, there's going to be data on the drivers tab, so you can take a look at that. Um, the track map, you can do fun things here. Uh, gearing we can take a look at and all the basically all of the uh, graphs are filled in except for ride height. Now ride heights wheel and wheel speeds can only be obtained after the session if you're using iAnalyze Racing dual mode uh, which this is set up for. Now we're gonna go back into uh, iRacing and exit the system and when we exit what we'll notice is that the, the I analyze racing will merge telemetry files because I'm in dual mode and then it will upload the fast lap and see if there's a check with the server to see if the fast lap is is good enough to get uploaded and then once it's connected it'll actually upload the lap uh, to I analyze racing so that it will be available for other folks to see 
And once that's done, you've completed your first session and you've got your first set of data. You can actually start comparing data to other folks. You can see here that uh, it, this was my personal best uh, practice lap right here was the was lap three here of the two that I ran. And uh, if we go down here, you can see that Mark Spencer uh, had in the number six car uh, had was the fastest driver. That little laurel wreath and a star mar marks that behind the number six there. And you can see he ran a 1029, which is pretty quick for this uh, short course here. Anyway, uh, that's the that's the uh, first run of, uh, of gathering your first data. And uh, next video, we'll start talking about the different tabs and what data sources mean, drivers, track, uh, and looking at all the individual uh, tabs to understand what they're all about. Thank you.